So uh, our our goal was to um, was to use the robustness motion analysis to study the motion of the left ventricle during the heart cycle. And so and the main problem so we had two two problems. One is uh, to compare the shape of uh, an LV within the cycle. So we, we compare different shapes of the same ventricle, the ventricle of one subject. And the second problem, so we have many frames of the same bodies that is moving, and the, the motion is, is seen, so it, it goes back to the original shape and then moves again. And then we have many different subjects, so the problem is to compare the, the, the motion, the healthy trajectory of different subjects that essentially are doing the same, the same motion. And
Uh, so the previous work has been done with many people. Um, half of the team was composed by medical doctors, cardiologists. And this work uh, um, has been done by uh, um, a smaller number of people. And there's no medical doctor here. There is a, a, a mathematician that has helped us a lot developing these tools. And so the, our, our idea is to, to, to do some blind tests. So do not work on real data, but let's construct ourselves our data and then analyze the data with these, uh, with these tools. So we have, uh, uh, and we start with a two-dimensional shape, very simple shape. So we have a map from R2 to R2, and with this map we can deform a two-dimensional shape. For example, this is an octagon. And this map contains two parameters, so we, we vary the parameters and we obtain different shapes. And here you see, so this is the map, this is the reference configuration, and those two are the parameters. Epsilon is um, an elongation and gamma is a shear. And this is a cycle of the parameter. And you see here the, the shape changes. When we cycle, we, we, we change the parameters along this trajectory and along this other trajectory. So you no, know, we assign the motion, then we perform the principal component analysis, and this is the result. And the result is uh, this motion is the sum of two principal uh, modes, PC1 and PC2, and these are the trajectory. And you see the the agreement is very good because uh, the green this is the parameter space and this is the principal component space, uh, the green trajectory and the black trajectory. And the, the, so the PC analysis can reconstruct the, the, the actual uh, variation of the parameters very well. And this is because uh, the, we have only one shape the initial shape and the, this is the shape space and this is the reference space and those two tra trajectory uh, all the trajectory starts from here and they stay very close to this spot so we, we are moving in the neighborhood of this spot now and you can do the same the same game with different shapes. So now we have many different shapes, very simple, hexagon, L shape, and then we, we also have other shapes. We use the same map, two parameters. And now this is what happens. And, and why, the, why the result is so poor? Because uh, those two shapes are very different. So now, we are, we start, this is a reference uh, configuration in the shape space. It is here, the octagon, and this is the, the, the shape variation of the octagon. The other one, the L shape, is very different, so it stays there, and this is the shape variation of the, of the L. And, and this, this uh, example is very similar mm -hmm. to what we want to do with the left ventricle because you now you have to think that this is the ventricle of one subject and this is the ventricle of another subject and they can be very different from each other and they can be very dif distant in the shape space but the trajectory if both the patients are healthy the trajectory should be almost the same if one of those uh, subjects is uh, in pathological condition, the trajectory should be very different. And so we want to eliminate the, 
differences among the initial shapes but, and to focus on the differences on the trajectory. So this is the key point. And so uh, and this is the, the problem how to center data line on shape space. So how what to do to compare the trajectory here to the trajectory in another place when those two trajectories are very far from each other. So we can one one strategy is the following you compute the, the mean for each trajectory then you compute the ground mean and this, this one so this black dot is the mean of the red trajectory this black dot is the mean between those two means and then you consider a tangent plane centered here the tangent plane here and you project the trajectory on this tangent plane. And so and, and then you compare, you are on the same tangent plane, so you can compare this projected trajectory to this one. You stay the same. But if uh, those two points are very far, this, this strategy does not work very well. So another strategy is to transport the, the data. So to <coughs> develop some tools for transporting all the data that you have here in the table of this point uh, onto the ground mean and again for, for, for the other point. Okay, I'm sorry, can you explain yes. the last one? Okay, so the, the last, here I, I consider, I consider uh, the dungeon plane at the local mean, I project this trajectory on this tangent plane, and then I want to transport the vectors lying on this tangent plane along the manifold. So you have to transport. So you're trying to compare three closed curves on the sphere, right? They they are they can be very different from each other. They are not close. These curves are not closed. Okay, so, yes, the, mm, curve, the red, these are closed curves, yes. So what closer, you, closer. I, so a closed curve. I mean, closer, closer, closed, yes. It, it is, uh, you start at this point, point, you come back to the same point. Yes. So one, okay, I don't know exactly what you're yes. doing, but there's this idea of curve development in differential geometry, which means you have a base point, some curve, you look at tangent space here, develop this cl closed or open curve to the tangent space. And then if you have some curves on tangent spaces, then you could use parallel transport and then directly yes. compare. So it's something yes, different. the problem is that the direct transport is uh, not all the, the, the property of the deformation, and we will show you. Second line is XYZ, the second, and so on. Okay. So, 
Now, I don't want to go into the detail because it depends on the application. But what is uh, in his head, in Kendall's head, that you are using, if I understand correctly, you have a shape belonging to a family. So, you, you more or less have a general uh, a class of shapes, and then you uh, find a way for labeling each shape with an element in a finite dimensional manifold. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. yes. Then you have the topology in the finite dimensional manifold, which tells you how close are the, the shapes. Right. You need a mapping to a manifold is a topological space with a. Uh, and to be credible, you will have to prove that if you increase the. the <laughs> convergence. Yeah, the convergence. In other words, you, you map to an n dimensional space, and you map to a two n dimensional space with a new connection and so forth, the, the result should be the same. Yes, because It's like a finite term and a mesh, you know. The <laughs> no, no, I, I, I don't want to complain. No, 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 no. Maybe we, we did not explain this, but we work on the shape space. We, we do not have any approximation. No, but the shape space, you have triangulated the heart, right? In other words, it's because that was the point he was making. I was making to the discretization. The, the, the dimensionality of the data remains the same. The, you have not a reduction. But why, why wouldn't you make more marks? Put more markers, yes. to get more accurate. See, the, the, the manifold is more complicated. And then you increase the dimension of the space. Yes, so yes, the question is where they converge the, the distance in one space and the distance in another. No, space. the space, is, when you perform the generalized robustness analysis, the space, the manifold, is the same. It's the same manifold for all because you align it. The no, other. it's the same. You sample the heart with 10 landmines or 1,000. No, the, the question is you have two hearts. You sample the shape with 10 landmines and then you compute the distance. Then, using the same parts, you sample the shape with 100 landmines. You compute the distance. Is yes. it the same as before when you use no, it's not. Then, 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 then you keep on. Uh, but this is. Very important because it depends from the hypothesis, morphological hypothesis, when you digitize the, 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 the knowledge of the phenomenon, the anatomical phenomenon is important because yeah, you can, yeah, you can decide the, before. Forget about the anatomy, that's just to get the money for the research. We are looking at the, the intellectual value of yes, the research. Yes, yes, I have surgeon. I wouldn't want to have a heart operation with that, don't worry. I wouldn't have, so. Uh, uh, look at the intellectual value of the, of the exercise. So the exercise has to be, in some sense, independent of a number of marks. Okay. Yes, yes, but this is because I, I, I do not, uh, not talk about that. But this type of simulations are uh, were done, were done in this kind of stuff. So, so you can find a threshold where the the number of landmarks increase. The distance, and then after that, the distance. But that, that was my question. Yes, okay, my now question. I understand. Yeah, now, yeah. Yes, now. Okay. I understand. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry to go. It's true, but you, you, you can reach the plateau. Yeah, that's okay. That, that's okay, now I understand. Sorry. <laughs> okay, excuse me. So, uh, Many tests with this idea, and so here yeah, we consider a uniform case. So those two are the parameters, the reference configuration here is a square, and with epsilon you transform this square in a rectangle, and the gamma shear the square. And so uniform case, the linear transformation can be represented with two by two matrices, you, you preserve the size, that's the area of, of the original shape, and also you have pure strain. So in the polar decomposition, the rotation is obviously identity. So 
the USB and <coughs> so this is the these are the frames. And now we perform a uh, um, generalized robustness analysis. So this is the shape. And you see the trajectory of the corners. So we have the shape, it's an octagon, eight landmarks. Uh, each landmark uh, is doing is following this trajectory, you follow here. And after the, the this analysis. Uh, you have uh, 3PC, this is a 56% score, 35% score, and 0% score. So there is no signal on the third PC. And this is true because uh, we only use two parameters. So the deformation mode must be two, two different deformation modes. And the other way recognize that there are only two modes. And, and this is the, the, the principal direction of the information. You see, this ver vertex is, is, is moving along this trajectory, and, but this is the principal component. 56%, and this is the second component, 35%. And so this is the, the space uh, of the parameters. So we we need many different cycles, so gamma and epsilon, the different cycles, uh, the gamma variation is low, the epsilon variation is very high, and, and in this case the gamma variation is very high, the epsilon variation is very low, and so on. And so this is the input and this is the output. So this is how the algorithm recognizes the variation. And the argument is uh, is uh, very, very good, and the, the explained variance is 100%. And it is like that because the, the motion is an affine motion. So. And now, what if you, you apply the same motion to different shapes? An octagon, rectangle, L shape, an oval, and this is a wheel shape. Something is just a joke. What happens? And you see what happens to the shapes. So the, it, it is the same deformation map applied to different shapes. And this is what you observe. And then if you if you take a uniform GPS, so if you put all the data together, the, the, the trajectory are very, very different, and you see jumps because uh, because the shapes are different. They are doing uh, the same motion, but the reference shape is different. So, jump to different shapes. And now what happens is that uh, you have uh, PC1, PC2, and also PC3. And this is a problem. Because we are performing this uh, shape, this uh, body, using two only two parameters. And so you should not have a, a third mode. And this is the parameter space as before, and this is the PC space. And now the explained variance is uh, almost 80%, it's no more 100%. And um, you see the, this. Uh, PC, the trajectory in the PC space are distant from each other, but they are doing the same cycle, and this distance is due to the difference of the original of, of the initial shapes. Then we use a parallel transport. So we use the other technique, parallel transport along the manifold, and now. Here we, we have a better result, it's 9%, before it was uh, 13%. Can I ask this parallel transport with respect to uh, which parallel transport? Yes, now I have a slide. So you have to define the parallel yes, you need a connection. Yes. 
uh, you have a metric Riemannian uh, yes. uh, uh, exchange, so there is a unique parameter. So the, the, the key point is the choice of the connection to right. move right. along the network. And the choice is you choose it with the metrics. The Riemannian, the no, the no, 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 there is no metric. Stuff in a different subject. So it is astonishing that. 
completely no, different problems. Yeah, no, that's it gives you the same. I want to invent. Well, so in Italian, secondo, forse viene meglio. The, 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 the problem in America is sempre quella di the metric is the Kendall metric. Cioè, è il vettore, cioè, come si può dire? The, the, the vector of the, the deformation vector are applied to homologous landmark from different, uh, diciamo, in different shapes, starting uh, from the shapes submerged in the shape space. Yeah, in the yeah I think that's yeah. what you want to claim, that there is a standard. Yes, but this standard does not hold the, the deformation because quella dopo quella la standard connection has a problem. As this is the, the, the desired connection. The desired. If you perform the standard connection, you, you arrive at the next. Okay, okay. I'm going to accept that. Just one question. Okay, this, is, this, um, this slide shows the, the problem that you have. Uh, Spaces with the uh, spaceman, say the spaceman vector, and, and the spaceman vector of this point for the shape, the spaceman point one or landmark one, landmark two, and so on. And here you have the same uh, spaceman vector but for a different shape, and you can see very well that, uh, for example. Uh, the displacement for landmark 5 is quite different here and here. So you have to, to map this, uh, to, so to use this information, when you want to compare the displacement of this landmark 5 during the same, the same shape change but different original shapes, <coughs> you can simply compare this vector with this vector. Same landmark, same deformation, but different region shape. So this is the point. And when you, you use the jumping transport, those this standard play play on the other one, you do exactly like that. So this is the origin of the vector. And this is what I I do before. So the the, the, the Levy connection is to like that. And, but we want a different connection because we want to compare okay, this is a proper, a proper comparison. Five, six, and so on. Now how to define the transport? Okay, uh, here uh, the, the, the previous question is the manual magic is the choice. You have, you, you have to choose the, the, the magic. Okay, the problem is to choose a magic yeah, yeah, that, that, that holds the original transformation better than other methods that can represent the, the, the deformation parameters better than other. The best metrics that uh, recover the deformation. Yeah, I mean, this is the, the objective. In other words, you should be able to, from those two different shapes, with this metric, to mark them identically. Yes. So you should be able to reconstruct the affine deformation yes. This is the goal. Yes. Yes. That's it. But, but, so at least in this, because this is like a test case, an artificial yes. test case, and in this case, it should be. Okay. Uh, okay. But the, so the, it's true that you, you need a, uh, to choose a metric.
So you, you, the idea is, is transport those two trajectories onto a common bond like that and then Theory 
developed uh, starting from Kendall by Fred Books in, in 1989 and 1991. And uh, the problem with non-uniform non uh, case is that the deeply spline theory is source dependent. So if you start uh, with different sources, we developed a special type of uh, process analysis uh, that we name uh, the hierarchical process analysis that can manage the differences, okay? But the non-affine part of the thin plate spline uh, bending energy matrix is source dependent. And the thin plate spline try to interpolate uh, the differences, the shape change between landmarks and between different uh, um, shapes uh, using a source dependent approach. So you always have uh, a small portion of variance explained, uh, 3%, 4%, but the performance is very good. It's very, very good. You can concentrate the 95% of the two deformation parameters in two PC scores that recover very, very well in a challenging case, because it's very challenging from a geometrical point of view because the shape was very different. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, I don't know sorry, I don't know much about it, but I was asked once and now I think I have the answer. Let us assume I give you two bones, not, not the formation, the female from one patient and from another patient, or the spine. Is there a canonical way to calculate the distance between them? You can... Uh, in the, uh, is this so method you would say, well, this, there is a normal spine? Check, two, two, two bones. Yeah. So, so can I tell you that this uh, in a canonical if you, if, this Yes, because if you, if you um, describe these bones using homologous, the same number, and homologous anatomical landmarks, okay, you can use the proposed distance metrics that uh, literature, a lot of literature proved that minimize the mean squared error much more than other methods, like Edmund Euclidean's matrix analysis or Rao, uh, Rao distance. The process matrix is the better one, mainly if you want to apply your definition methods, because the goal in this case is statistical. If you have a sample of uh, patients and a sample of other patients, you want to assess statistically the differences in shape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So you have two objectives. One is the mathematical uh, formalism, okay, to uh, concentrate the deformation parameters in the uh, few as possible uh, PC scores. And the other one is to apply this PC scores, to use this PC scores in statistical shape, statistical analysis to assess differences in shapes.